This is Twit. So I know you're going to mock me. Yeah. But Apple's new MacBook Pro came out yep. with the i9 processor, the first MacBook to support as much as 32 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM, not your Slowpoke LD <laughs> LP DDR3. No, DDR4 RAM. Yes. And its own dedicated graphics card, a Radeon 560, and for a mere $800 additional, you can get this. <laughs> A, a thermally controlled tower that has a additional graphics processing unit, an eGPU that connects via Thunderbolt 3 to give it even that more. That's what that is. Yeah. <laughs> That's the new garbage can? It's the new garbage can, but guess no, what? I it's not even a computer. It's just a GPU. It's just the graphics processor. Wow. Um, there's been a That's lot a of talk shape. about it being uh, an overheating monster. Uh, Dave Lee, who's a YouTuber, was the first to report this. He said, uh, he what he did is he compiled or re rendered a uh, Premiere Pro video file. It took about half an hour to render. And he noticed that as it got hot, as the, as the i9, six-core processor. And by the way, iFixit says that the new MacBook Pros have a completely unchanged thermal cooling system from previous Mac Pros. So no attempt was made to accommodate a chip that is 50% hotter and uses much more power. Uh, he noticed that as, a, as a, you know, five minutes in, the GPU is suddenly going boom, down way, way, way down below spec. It's, uh, it's a 2.9 gigahertz i9 processor that peaks out at 4.8 gigahertz. It was operating at 1 gigahertz, 2 gigahertz. And it did that for the next half hour. It flapped. Yeah. It was slow. Uh, he said... Oh man! Then he put it. Then he did something I would not recommend. He put it in the freezer, <laughs> oh, no. and it was like twenty five percent crack? faster. I, you know, the thing that strikes me about all of this is people seem to forget that they're running a laptop. Do you remember the days of the luggable? Yeah. And how many sacrifices you we could made have a desktop it? replacement laptop that That's would right. be twelve pounds and yeah. have a jet engine in the back yeah. blowing the hot air. Yeah. I mean, I, I kind of want to... I mean, when last time I was here, you and I talked, I was here in January, I said Intel doesn't have any CPUs. Right. There probably won't be another uh, release of MacBooks in 2018. So I got that wrong. You were wrong. I was wrong. But I still think I'm right because this is showing you that this chip is not fit for laptops. Well... Right? So my point I is, wanna, is that this I, I want to report my own experience because I foolishly spent more than $4,000 <laughs> okay. on an i9. Excellent. Let's see how that works and, out. Uh, and, I, and I got the Intel. They have a little widget mm -hmm. that shows clock speed, but mm -hmm. I also have iStat menus, which shows clock speed. Uh, and I, a couple of things I want to report. First of all, um, I had there's a number of different things you can do. I, one of the reasons I wanted it to be faster was for Lightroom. Mm-hmm. Because I, uh, I use Lightroom. I like, I'm an avid and not good, but an avid amateur photographer. And I use Adobe's Lightroom, which is the worst piece of software ever uh, because it's so slow. It's mostly Lua scripts. Mm -hmm. So it's not the most performant thing ever. And what was really getting me is that you'd import a bunch of raw photos, 42 megabyte files, and you'd want to go pretty quickly saying, yeah, that one's good. No, no, no. Yeah, that one's good. And it would take three or four seconds to go to each image. So I, for on that use, this thing is great. Yep. And in fact, with Lightroom running in the background, rendering, uh, pre-rendering images and stuff, the CPU goes up to about four gigahertz and kind of stays there. Yeah. Nice. Now, admittedly, when you're doing that, the battery life goes down about an hour. Yeah. And the keyboard, which is the hottest part, we, we got one of those instant read thermometers. The keyboard goes up to 108 degrees. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a little toasty for typing. Yeah. So admittedly, that's a problem. Yeah. Uh, if you do, and we tried it, we ran Handbrake, for instance, which is smart enough to use all six CPUs, peg them out. Doesn't use the GPU, but use all six CPUs to render video. And yeah, you bet. Boom, boom, it goes up and then boom, it goes down because it's too hot. Too hot. And saying. in fact, if you look at the temperature, it goes up to 100 Celsius and stops. And as soon as it gets to 100 Celsius, everything slows down because yep. it doesn't want to go over 100. So it should it's have just, been. So what should we should have seen was the Core i9 was meant to be a 10 nanometer uh, Skylake processor, a smaller, right? more efficient, smaller, cooler. Narrow, cooler. And what's happened here is it's that, in my opinion, is Apple has sort of caved to the public opinion and said we need to bring a new MacBook Pro to market. And all the work they've done with Intel's processors, which have been delayed, isn't able to be brought forward. So you can almost blame it. Intel for this, frankly. Uh, Although Apple should have said, 
no, we're not going to do it. I have to say, though, as a as mm -hmm. a as certain kinds of users, yeah. this is a great thing. I'm very happy the Lightroom performance. When I am not, when I'm just doing normal things, browsing, email, mm -hmm. nothing heavy duty, the clock speed does go down about two gigahertz or one and a half gigahertz, and I get eight mm -hmm. hours of battery life, just so as what I, just as I would want. Yep. So it is a great laptop. And when I'm compiling software, which is very bursty, very fast. Yep. Runs programs very fast. I it's prefer, only I, when you're doing stuff that open fast. And everything opens fast. Everything feels snappy. I love this machine. They kind of fixed mm -hmm. the keyboard. It's not perfect, but I'm very happy. Now, I I sh probably shouldn't have spent seven hundred dollars on this <laughs> on the GPU. I didn't realize that. Oh, what quite is that intended so to be used for? Is well, that you plug it in, and then it offloads the internal GPU. Right. And and this thing is like a chimney. You feel the heat coming rising off of this. Mm -hmm. And in theory, I guess this was Apple yeah. probably knowing that the i9 was going to have thermal yeah. throttling, saying, "Well, if you really, I mean, you probably look it. Yeah. You're using a laptop that's this thin to try to render 4K video. You probably, I wouldn't recommend it. No. Maybe you get the eGPU. Maybe okay, it's okay. Really, you should be using a desktop PC or a desktop replacement yep. from another company. Yeah. But you want to use. I think Final the problem Pro is there's just the average person. It, they should not get this. Expensive. Yeah, no, the right, good right. news is they're not going to because it's four thousand. Right. Actually, you can get up to seven thousand dollars if yeah, you really is, try. I think the thing that is here, what we're seeing is we're reaching the limits of our current engineering. Intel has been able to unable to make the transition from fourteen to ten. They haven't been able to bring out a GPU that Apple can get into the thermal envelope of the chassis. Now, I think it's possible that Apple had a new chassis design with a new thermal capability. Yeah, this is a four-year-old chassis so This design. is a four-year-old unibody Mac. It's not yeah. new. So it, it just sort of feels like they four, three maybe. said this is the only decision we can make and put the i9 inside of the existing box. And for some people like me, I'm happy. Yeah. Because for the kind of work I do, it's fine. It is. If you're a video editor or you're going to do long renders or you're going to do uh, long... Mm -hmm. I tried my uh, Fusion Pro Studio software rendering a 360. I don't because yeah. <laughs> it'll, it'll actually be slower than uh, yeah, a slower machine.